Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Yes, welcome back again to Canon Fora TV, the channel for the happy people all over this world. Smiling these days, yes. I wonder why that is. But wasn't it just like the, the other day we did the Easy Talk? And they do say it's a good time of flying, a sign of, of age. So I might be um, getting older. Getting on. Anyhow, we've got one returning person from the last week's Easy Talk. And um, boy, was it an interesting Easy Talk. Was uh, Actually, brother, I, do you have your um, bottle of Hennessy? <laughs> Uh, I'll have to ask for uh, a movie to 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 send some. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get on the case. <laughs> but you know, before we get into this easy talk, we we'll see you on the other side of this music intro. It's Friday. It's the Easy Talk. It's the Easy Talk. It is Friday. It's uh, the place where the happy people like to come and congregate. Yes, uh, guys, make sure that you do subscribe to Canfoy TV. I'm hit the bell notification button so you can receive almost, almost all the latest and breaking. Actually, we don't do breaking news over here. We just do um, happy news. Ralph, how are you? I'm happy. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's always nice to be on the show now where we can just be happy and, and smiling about things. We don't have to dissect everything yeah. <laughs> that happened yesterday in a in like a defeatist way. We can we can do it from the positive. So I'm good. Good, good, good. Brother Isaac. Can you hear me? How are you? I think he's got a problem with his uh with his connection. Uh -huh. Uh, he, oh. he, um, it seems like uh, every every time we have the music intro, there is a, a glitch over here. Uh, it, it happened uh, last week, um, but at least I'm back. Yeah, I think that's something more on 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 our side over here. I need to um fire the tech people. Oh, the tech people is actually me, so I probably need to fire myself. <laughs> but anyway, 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 we actually want to talk about um. Two strikers, uh, Gabriel Jesus and Eddie Nketia. Now, Ralph, I put out a poll um, a few days ago, and I was just innocently asking the question, do we need to drop Gabriel Jesus? Because I know he got concussion in the Liverpool game, didn't play in a return game against uh, Bodo Glimt. Is looking a little bit out of sorts. I don't know, is it just me or... Where do you stand with Gabriel Jesus and Eddie and Ketia, Eddie and Ketia and Gabriel Jesus, Ralph? Well, well, firstly, I think with Gabriel Jesus, he's he's a victim of his own high standards, right? Because because he's come into the team playing so well, not just scoring, but if you look at the the numbers he puts in in terms of running and and ground covered, he's he's leading also like the press and the the defensive block with, with some of his work. So he's come in all guns blazing. And so if he does have a slightly quieter day than normal, then then maybe we're judging him harder than, than we would given his, his good standards. I mean, I, I don't see any need to, to rest him because he's actually going to force himself into a rest at some point because he's already picked up four yellow cards, um, which is quite <laughs> impressive and, and talks to some of that off the ball work he's doing. So at some point, he is going to pick up a suspension sooner or later. I mean, obviously, we wouldn't want him to do it before a bigger game. So, so there's that kind of, of risk. But at the moment, I, I wouldn't see any reason to want to rest him in the Premier League. I was surprised that he played last night um, and also that he played alongside Eddie um, because what we've seen is usually it's more, more of an interchange and they, they have played kind of, I'm trying to think, they've played like minutes together, they've shared time on the pitch together, but I'm, I'm trying to remember if they actually started a game together, um, because then then what you usually do there is you, you're pushing one of them out out from the central role, which is where both of them prefer to play, so so that was quite surprising, I guess. 
but I would, I mean, for me, Gabriel Jesus is still, he's the, he's your number one striker. And we'll, we'll play him. We'll try and play him as much as we can. Arteta was, was interviewed, right, about Saka saying, can he play, is it sustainable he plays all these games? And he said, for me, everybody has to play 70 games a year and that's yeah. the mentality. Yeah. So yeah. If, yeah. if he believes that and he has better knowledge than we do about fitness and, and whether people can actually do that, if he believes they can do it, then, then we need Gabriel in as many games as possible. Mm. Um, do, do you think Eddie Nketa gets a raw deal from the fans? You know, stuff about, you know, wearing a number 14 shirt, five-year deal, £100,000 a week. This isn't warranted, or do you think we're just too harsh on uh, Nketiah, Ralph? I would say we're harsh if, if people are doing that. I haven't heard that so much. But, I mean, I think the thing about Nketiah is he's, he's always going to be a number two striker until something happens where he can... He either goes on a great scoring run coming off the bench and like forces his way into the team or, or there was a long-term injury. A bit like we saw last year where, when he did get that run in the team. But but I think he plays his role to to what he's there to do at the moment. I mean, when he comes on, he's good at keeping the ball, holding the ball. He's, he can start running past defenders. He's a, he's a great option for me to have as a second striker, as a... a no, a better put a substitute striker, as in to come on when the game's breaking up and and to to start running and, and keeping defenses tied and that kind of thing. So I, I think he does that support role well. I know I know mm. what you mean because he's earning a lot of money and he has a long contract. Uh, is he expected to do more? M maybe, but I think for us, I mean, maintaining the squad is is more important. You wouldn't want to, the last thing you want to do is lose him, bring someone else in who maybe isn't with the same mentality of of being able to to play that second role because a lot of people don't like to be on the bench. Just ask yeah. Cristiano Ronaldo in, in Man United, right? <laughs> they are not happy people. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> uh, Isaac, your thought about these two strikers, <laughs> Gabriel Jesus and uh, Eddie Nketiah? Uh, I agree with what uh, Raf has said that uh, Jesus has set a high, very, very high standards for himself. I was reading an article some days back that uh, when he was playing for Brazil national team, he was a main striker. He was playing as a striker, but he went on a, a goal holiday, and then uh, the expectations that were on him were so big, and the fans were complaining that their striker is not scoring. And then he went to his coach and asked his coach, can you play me off the wing? And then the, the coach was, okay, if you want me to play you off the wing, it's okay. And then he was put the wing, and then he started performing playing off, off the wing. And he grew in into the game and he he added into his goal goal tallies after he was playing on the wing last season uh when man city were playing most of the time we are saying that man city are playing without a striker and we forgot that jesus is a striker because he was primarily operating from the wing and right now at Arsenal, all the expectations we have on him to be our main man. That is why we have all the pressure that we want to see him score more and more. But he's contributing a lot on the ball, off the off and on the ball. And his, uh, his mentality, what he's brought to the team is great. You look at him defend the other day. Uh, I watched a video where uh, Pep uh, was saying that he can defend very well and he can he can be the best striker. So you have a striker and a defender at the same time. And as I've been watching his games, I realize he drops even to playing as a number six sometimes. And sometimes you can see him operating as a fullback. So he offers so much of the ball and even on the ball, when he is on form, he is a threat. And uh, coming to uh, Anketia, Anketia hasn't uh, been of the best this season. Last season, towards the end of the season, it is when uh, he was on a goal streak. But 
I'm afraid that if we lost Jesus to an injury today, we might struggle because of looking at the way Nketiah plays, he doesn't hold a play as much as Jesus is doing. You see, the problem today is because we are performing highly and everybody is performing, we are raising the standards for each and every player. Like now we are comparing his uh, Nketiah to Jesus and we, we are all, all the time saying, if we lose Jesus, can Nketiah feel his shoes is simply because we are performing highly and we are doing good and and we are we are we are we are we are uh, we are leading the table that is why we're having all these discussions but uh, the quality that uh, Jesus has and the qualities of Nketia are a bit different if you look at the players profiles like for, for instance if yesterday Jesus was playing off the wing it could have worked better for him to play off the wing and Ketia to play as a number nine because Jesus is used to playing off the wing. And some other time, some, some, some weeks back, I was having a discussion with a colleague of mine who was a Chelsea fan. And there's a, another colleague who's an Arsenal fan. And the Chelsea fan was telling uh, this uh, Arsenal fan that he would rather have Jesus than Haaland in his squad. And he was like, Isaac, tell him you, if you had Haaland, Jesus in your squad. And I was thinking, where is he coming from? And I understood where he was coming from because you look at uh, Haaland, Haaland, yes, he is a goal machine. He is cause, but he, he waits for the opportunity. He waits for the team to create the opportunities for him. But you look at Jesus, he creates the opportunities for him. He will drop deep mm. to uh, to build a play rather than wait to score. Mm. Mm. Uh, I forgot to ask, Ralph, uh, Ralph, I know you cover a lot of Central and South America and football. I've seen the content you do on Twitter. Wonderful stuff, by the way. There's, here's the cynical side of me. Gabo Jesus didn't score any goals in the last um, uh, World Cup. Is he just not is he just playing to 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 get selected for the Brazilian national team? Is he just playing his heart out, hoping that Tite is going to choose him for the Brazilian national team for the World Cup? That's it. That's a very good point because he wasn't in the most recent squad. And yeah. there's two theories to that. Is one that he's not being looked at, considered, or that Edu is was helping out Arsenal a little bit with, with his former boss, TJ, because Edu used to work on the Brazil national team and said, just just save them. You don't need them for the friendlies. Um, but I think, I mean, I'm sure it's a huge motivation. It's, it's a big thing in, in South America that maybe isn't picked up as much in Europe, just how important the, the World Cup is. It, it's the same with yeah. uh, Argentina, Uruguay. Look at Luis Suarez just went back to Uruguay, but he's not playing maybe... At, at the high, highest level now, because he's a uh, national in Uruguay, but don't think that guy isn't training and he's thinking is, and his mind is set on the World Cup. And don't be surprised if he scores a few goals there. So I think with Gabriel Jesus, this is definitely a huge motivation for him. But but let's remember, he's also he's also a winner. I mean, he just yeah. he just wins lots of trophies. So he has his own his own motivation within Arsenal. I don't think he wants to come here, play the World Cup, and then and then fizzle out. I mean, he wants to win things. He wants to do things. So let's you know, let's use that to our advantage that he's motivated now. And, and post-World Cup, if we're, if we're still in the fight, which I would definitely expect us to be, he's got more motivation to keep going. And, and there's plenty of trophies on offer this year, right? We've, we're talking about Premier League, Europa League at the moment. We're still in, we've got the League Cup coming up soon against Brighton. Then we've got FA Cup starting next year. There's plenty of things for him to get his teeth into because... Because that's part of why Arteta signed him was that was that mentality he has. But yeah, for sure, the the World Cup's a big motivation to him. Yeah, yeah. And actually, within the last um, I say hour, I have heard some. It's funny, isn't it? We're 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 waiting, hoping that the star boy Bukayo Saka would, would have been offered and signed the uh, contract extension. We're waiting for William Saliba. There's still some question mark whether he's going to want to sign a contract extension. And lo and behold, you know. Look at my phone. 
and Gabriel Magaliang's has signed a contract extension. What's going on? <laughs> Isaac, what's going on? <laughs> Magaliang's has signed a contract extension. <laughs> <laughs> See the, the the spirit and the dressing room is great. <laughs> we play soccer. I I look at the body language of the players. It is very different compared to us two seasons or even last season. The spirit just uh, from the end of last season to this season is a very very different spirit. And during uh, after after the game yesterday, uh, uh, Granite was interviewed and. And, and he say that right now we are the most dangerous team because he understands the, the momentum that comes with winning. And uh, if you win something, actually, everybody wants to be part of that thing. I'm not, uh, I'm very confident that uh, uh, we have no problem with the star boy Saka because he is a boyhood, uh, this is boyhood club. He's an Arsenal supporter, so I have no problem with him. You look at uh, Gamatinelli, I I have also confidence in him signing another contract, uh, but I'm not so sure about uh, Saliba. But I, I I really want him to to stay. So perhaps if we trophy, we he might be galvanized or he might be uh, uh, re ready to commit himself to a club that is winning something. Mm. So and. Just as you've uh, put it, we have uh, a leader. And actually, the other day I was watching a clip and realized that he is taking coaching lessons. So, yeah. and and looking at the game uh, versus PSV yesterday, I was looking at him and he was calling out players on and telling them on which position to take. And was like, really, this guy has improved a lot. This guy has changed. Actually, if, if we are to... To, to say today the most improved or the most turnaround player is Granit Xhaka. There's no other player that has improved or has had a turnaround as Granit Xhaka in the Prem. Mm -hmm. um, so, Ralph, yesterday, <coughs> he, PSV and um, Granit Xhaka uh, score, score winner. And actually, it was a good goal. You know, a really good goal with his weaker foot. But... Um, your thoughts quickly about Granite Granite Shaka and the game yesterday, PSV. Yeah, a really well taken goal on, on his yeah. weaker foot, but it was an indication of what he's been doing all season, right? And this new freer role he has to play higher up the pitch. And actually, I think a lot of that we should talk about that in conjunction with we're talking about Gabriel Jesus because because Gabriel Jesus is not that kind of striker that 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 almost takes all the space in the box. He, he's a mover. He wants to get get in and around and, and move pieces. And that's giving some of the freedom to Shaka to pick up those those positions in the penalty area, which you just didn't see last year. He, he, just, he just wasn't really there. And you can see he's much more comfortable because not, not only is he able to score the goals, he's not, he doesn't commit those silly fouls further, you know, further, uh, further back on the pitch which was one of the frustrations we, we had with him. Now he's freer. He doesn't feel he has to commit to those kind of fouls. He knows he has Partey behind him who can do that, that job of cleaning up. And really he has Saliba, who Saliba is like the ultimate in, in sweeping and mopping up because of his, his pace and, and his ability to kind of to come around and, and recover. So it's given Shaq all this freedom to go further forward. And, and yeah, I agree with, with Isaac that it's been the... It's been really the turnaround for us, and and it's incredible to see that the kind of leadership he's showing. When we know that he he wasn't a good leader, he was he was a kind of petulant leader, and and he was turning on the fans, and and he wasn't he just didn't seem motivated by it or or interested in in whatever the project was at the time. But that, but again, credit to Arteta with this as well. He's he's got him on board with this. He's got him leading. Um, Kind of leading his vision and 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 pushing that forward, which is something he does for for Switzerland a lot. So we're starting to see that at Arsenal, and it's yeah, it's is is great to see. And with the with the game against PSV, yeah, he was he we needed something like that, right? Because we were we did in the first half we didn't do much, but in the second half we we're peppering the goal and we weren't finding the breakthrough. And 
that's what you need. Your your midfielders to to help you out when when the strikers can't find a goal. Sorry about that. <laughs> the cable actually came out. <laughs> he still can't, can't tackle. Got a yellow yesterday, didn't he? Granite Shaka. Yeah, yeah. There's, don't have him tackling. Try, try and <laughs> let make sure that that Sambi's doing it. Partey's doing that. <laughs> don't, just have him. Just have him kind of shielding players and and shadowing them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and not a legend. Not an Arsenal legend. Ralph Isaac. Isaac Ralph. I'll let, I'll let Isaac go first. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac, Granite Shaka, a legend? Isaac? I don't think he, he's... I think we've lost, we've lost Isaac. Isaac, can you hear me? Ah. Is it? I'm going to have to answer it, aren't I, Alex? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I, I can hear you, Alex. <clears throat> yeah, so Granite Shaka, is he, is he a legend? Okay, I, 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 I was saying, yeah, he, 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 he could be a legend. He's 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 building his career right now. We've had him. We have had this this guy for seven years, and we have never seen what we are seeing this season. From the end of last season to this season, we have we have never had a Jaka who is well, and I think he's he's making his career. He's 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 building his way up to become a legend. Because of the way he's playing, the way he's 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 like he's changed totally. We we haven't had him this much. We we I remember there is the 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 there is a show we did uh during the the pandemic period, Alex, and we we were like comparing him when he's playing to uh, at Arsenal and when he's playing at the national team, and we were of. Uh, 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 uh. We we say that he when he's playing for the national team he's he's an animal he's 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 playing at his best. Little did we realize that he was playing in a more different role than he was playing for the Arsenal. Because when he's playing when he initially played for us, we were depending on him like a holding midfielder because we are using two holding midfielders. But since that tweak that Ateta has introduced, and he's if now playing a more free, freer role. He's playing two number eights. He is at his best. So, simply is just changing where he play, used to play to playing number uh, as a number eight. That is where we have seen his best. Right now, you are not afraid that he's going to commit a fall on your box or, or, or our side he'll rather commit a fall on the opposition box which will be a free kick but if he commits a fall in our box is a penalty yeah yeah for sure for sure so not not a legend isaac is isaac doing this on purpose <laughs> no, 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 I have. <laughs> it seems seems like someone has a submarine somewhere. Oh. So we have a. Uh... <laughs> look, look, the the original uh, Godfather said today we are going to introduce a submarine that is going to to give a few hiccups. But no worries, I can hear you uh, despite the few glitches. Okay, all right. Over to you, Ralph. Yeah, but, I mean, for me, it, he's not a legend because, partly because of what's happened. And then I was about to say he could be a legend if he wins something. But then he's won two FA Cups, if you think about it, and he's played in those finals. But it, it's kind of not enough to offset some of the negatives we've had at the 
in the middle period, I would say, in a way, well, not the middle period, but the more recent period, I think he, he would be, be a legend if this year we did we pulled off the incredible and won the league. I mean, then he shoots himself right up there. But but because of what's gone before him, I think it's hard to put him in that in that category. Imagine him on the on the Emirates when they did have the players there on on the front of the Emirates. I couldn't imagine seeing Shaka on there, to be honest. <laughs> I'll have nightmares. <laughs> anyway, anyway, let's let's uh, take a break. Let's go into uh, the live chat for the first time on this particular Easy Talk. And we've got uh, actually the moderators there. Hey, up, Gunas. Uh, welcome to Canon for TV, he says. And Ange Bear, the first lady of Canon for TV, says, uh, evening, guys. Uh, Colin, one of our moderators and members, says, how, how are you, Ashley? What about us? What about how are we, Colin? Thank you, Colin. Um, Gary, we're having a discussion. Yeah, 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 without us. Uh, DWTT says, uh, afternoon, Alex, panel, and chat room. That's more like it. Um, you, st you, sh you still should uh, be biting stuff. It's not the time uh, to rest. Oof. Well, I think, didn't Arthur say players of a top caliber should be played in 70 games, Ralph? 70 games? Yeah, that's what that's what he was saying in the interview. 70 games a year, um, be ready every three days. They need to be knocking on my door to play, not knocking on my door to say they want a rest. So it was, yeah, no time for a rest. We can agree with that. And, and there will be no time. It's, we've got plenty more games to, to squeeze in before the World Cup. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, dear. He wanted to wear it. Uh, the, the weight comes with it. And his new contract, yeah, Sunshine and Rainbows, are uh, for, for, what's that, Bitty League Football. Well, listen, I think Gabriel Magaliangs. That is that the right pronunciation of his surname? Ralph Magaliangs, Magaliais, Magaliais. I think, yeah, Magaliais. Yeah. yeah, I think it's worthy. I think he's deserved it. You know, um, good luck to him. Good luck to him. Yeah, uh, yeah. What else do we have here? Uh, okay, John Nagisa uh, says uh, good evening, good evening to you as well. There must be a great if our boys are not getting picked. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> would you be overly upset if our players were not chosen to feature in the World Cup? <clears throat> Every player wants to play for their uh, country and they will be disappointed, yes, because if they are not picked to play for their country because uh, the, 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 the feeling that comes with playing for the national team is a lot more different because players have been asked what will you take the champions league or the world cup every player chooses the world cup because it comes with a, a different feeling to play play for, for 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 the national team i don't think they'll be left out because yes brazil has a great great talent a pool to to pick from and uh, uh, looking at, at our boys I believe they'll be called up and probably they not be playing each and every game because Brazil, as I look at it, they have a huge bench or they have a huge, a huge, a huge list of players who are playing really, really good. And in every position, they have several players who are playing there. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, uh, Ralph, we, I mean, I, I, I listen to. Uh, an interview that um, I forgot the guy's name now. Um, Vickery, mm -hmm. he's a he's a South American. Uh, he's a British guy who now lives in, in Brazil, been living there for almost thirty years. And he did an interview on a particular radio station. He said that the pride to go out and, and represent Brazil it, it's 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 like up up there, isn't it? S South American nations they want to represent their their, their teams, don't they, Ralph? Yeah, it's it's a huge thing. For the players and and for this Brazil team particularly, there there's a whole revenge factor because they lost the Copa America final to Argentina. They were hoping to get revenge in the World Cup qualifiers and they didn't. That game got suspended because of a crazy COVID kind of situation, and yeah. they decided not to replay it. So so Brazil have that kind of 
what's the word like it, almost like the revenge factor that they're going in with this and and for sure i think of the three players gabriel jesus is the one that that he will needs to be part of that he wants to redeem himself and mm. and go to the world cup i mean looking at the team is for martinelli it could be a, a, a stretch too far because for however good martinelli is i mean they got Vin vinicius they got neymar they have um they have some kids in brazil at the moment that are coming through it's is an incredible incredible talent pool and i think for someone like martinelli maybe it's he'll he'll be in his prime four years from now um, mm. but for someone like gabriel jesus i agree if he doesn't play even though we might want him to have the rest i think he might look at himself and say oh but why am i at arsenal and i can't get into the national team am i am i at the right place am i doing the right things and mm. and he could mm. he could be kind of disinterested for a month instead of being training hard and playing for a month so yeah, mm. hopefully the definitely Gabriel Jesus can go. I think that's that's yeah. what we want to see. Yeah. Well, actually, you know, let's go on to the next topic, and um, the next topic is, well, the the wheels have not fallen off just yet. Are the wheels going to fall off? I mean, I'm looking at the um, the, the table as it stands, and uh, Arsenal remain top of the um the Premier League tree. Uh, one ten uh, loss one and. Um, Man City are just, just just around the corner from us, actually. Just um, yeah. Um, Isaac, the, the wheels are, are the wheels going to fall off? <laughs> uh, to 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 be honest, I think we 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 not have the depth to compete the likes of Man City. But uh, look at it. If you 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 are you you are riding the wave and you are uh, on top of it. Just ride it, ride, enjoy riding the wave because we are on top of the wave. We should enjoy riding the wave. Let's see how far we can take it until the break. But but something else that encourages me, if you look at our squad and you look at the squad of the likes of uh, uh, the likes of uh, Man City, because right now they are our main competitor. Is like. They are squad. We have a few players who will be going to the World Cup, but you look at Man City, it's like most of the players and who are first team starters will be going to the World Cup and they play for nations which might go even up to the quarters and even to the semis. So let's ride this wave until the break to the World Cup because there is a possibility we could still be top. Uh, as we go into the World Cup and see what comes January uh, when we resume and strengthen in January, we strengthen in January and let's see how far we can push it. Man City have had the experience of winning this league. I'm hoping we can push them like the Liverpool Liverpool have been pushing them to the last day. Mm. Uh, and for you, for you, Raf, the wheels have not fallen off yet. The, the, the wheels haven't fallen off, I mean... Are we going to slow down? I think we have to. If we keep if we keep this up, there's 2.7 points a game. You end the league with 102 points. I mean, I would love us to get over 100 points, but I'm not sure we can keep that rate up. But is it, let's say, 90 points, which in the old days, 80 points could pretty much win you the title. But but now with Man City, you have to be looking around 90. I mean, even Liverpool get get over 90 and finish second. Yeah. To get 90 points from now, you're averaging about 2.2 a game which is what Arsenal were doing towards the end of last year. But it wasn't enough because of the bad start we had. And, and we know there's those two key games, Newcastle-Tottenham, that we lost. But but they're actually the whole of April and May, we, we're, we're around there at, two point, I think, 2.1 points per game or something. I was looking at this the other day because I, I guess I am getting, getting interested that something <laughs> incredible could happen. There's just so many unknowns. I mean, the World Cup in the middle of the year, that's, it's uh, the middle of the season, it's such an unknown. Yeah. We know that we know that we're weaker than Man City in terms of squad depth. So it, injuries are going to happen somewhere along the line, and it it will affect us more than them. But it, then it could depend. I mean, what if Haaland gets injured, which he has a long injury history? So mm. Th mm. there's a lot that can happen. I mean, I think for sure we'll slow down. Will the wheels come like crashing down, and we and we finish? I don't know, third or fourth? I, I don't think so. I, I'm pretty confident that we're we're up there. A team that starts like this usually will end up first or second, and and so we've got a great chance of mm. of running this towards 
towards it deep into spring. And wow, that would be good to see. Then I'll have to fly over to London to go to a game, I think, if we're still in it by then. We'll be waiting for you. <laughs> and Isaac as well. Ralph, <laughs> <laughs> uh, very quickly, um, what, what would have... What targets would have Arteta set the team and the club? To, to win the Premier League or just... I don't know. What, what targets do you think he would have set the, the players? Oh, that's, a, that's such a good question because mm. we, we got a little insight into his psychology in the, in the documentary, right? Yeah. You get, I get the feeling that he, he will want to break things down and not set, set crazy targets of winning the league. I don't think he would have set that at the beginning of the season. And I also don't think he would change. He's a very stubborn person in a yeah. good way, I mean. But he's a very stubborn person in that if he said top four at the beginning of the season, he's it's top four for the rest of the season. And I think that that would have been the the challenge was to get get into the Champions League. That's that that's what he would have set. We're definitely on course for that already. The the really important thing that Arsenal have done is look at some of the games that we didn't pick up three points last year. We've we've done it this time. And so we're already making a difference from this time last year by by picking up some of those those points. I mean, um, for example, I think like the Brentford game, we, we didn't win, right? The Crystal Palace, a very opening game of the season. I think we drew away last year or we lost. So we're already making a bit of a difference there. Um, the other interesting thing, uh, if we, I don't know if we can go into in too much detail, but last year we only drew, I think, two games, right? Which, which is incredible to only draw two games in the whole season. And it's similar to what Pochettino did at Tottenham when Tottenham were doing well. They, they rarely drew it. It was all or nothing to play on the documentary, but it was going for those wins. And that's actually why we're top of the league right now, because Man City are, are drawing. They, they've picked up three draws. Mm. Arsenal haven't drawn a game. It's, it's win or bust at the moment. So yeah. that's, that's an interesting thing to, to maybe look into in more depth another time. But it, are mm. we trying to play for that? Are we, are we trying not to draw? And we... And we we risk going for the wins, knowing that on over the course of the season it, it pays off. It might be something that another strategy that he's looked into. Mm, mm. Uh, and for for you, Isaac, do you think he would have told the players set? Uh, you know, uh, um, how can I say this? Uh, uh, a final destination, i.e., listen, guys, we're going to go for the Champions League spot, any of the four positions, or we're going out to win the Premier League. Do you think he would have told the players that, or do you concur with what Ralph just said? I concur with Ralph. I don't think he, he told them we are going for the first spot because he is not crazy. He understands the quality of other teams around him. So he, he's probably uh, told them we are going to the Champions League this season. No matter which spot we finish for the Champions League as much as we finish for the uh, and play in the Champions League. So I believe his uh, targets for the Champions League, and wow, wow to him. It is paying off. He is sitting pretty fast in, in, in the title because he's, he set those standards and those standards are, are showing that, yeah, they can, they, they can compete. They can compete. We, we played uh, we played uh, the likes of uh, Palace and I was saying, oh, Arsenal have not played a great team yet. Played Tottenham. And then still, they haven't played a team yet. We played Liverpool, and I heard, oh, they played Liverpool when they were they were struggling. So I'm waiting when we can play City at home and give them problems like we gave them last season. We deserve to win last season against City, but we lost because of a few a few mistakes that we committed here and there. If we beat Man City at home this season, boy, I think. We are going to push them to the end. Yeah, yeah. Well said, actually. Um, let's go again, break and go into the live chat. There's been just so many comments there. I want, do want to try and catch one. Uh, John Nagiza uh, says, uh, Alex, I, I managed uh, to change my profile. Uh, what do you think? I'll get back to you on that. Oh, <laughs> 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 Jacka is not a legend, Colin Young says. I'm saying nothing. Ang says, an uh, urban legend, but not an Arsenal legend. I'm sorry, Ange. Uh, John says, uh, come on, Alex, uh, the X-Man's a legend. What, what's, what's, what's he done? What's he done to, to, to... 
I can't imagine him. Yeah, no, 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 not a legend. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, evening, ladies and gents, <laughs> as uh, they assembled. And uh, Colin says, uh, oh, goodness gracious, Isaac, don't go there. Make a left in Albuquerque. All right. What did Isaac say? <laughs> I, must have missed yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I said. <laughs> <laughs> As she says, um, Shaka is nowhere legend. Three seasons of red cards, drop points and drop league positions. No way. Just because Arteta woke up, realized he cannot defend and move him, does not make him a legend. Or oh, it does make him. Does not. Does not. Does. Anyway. Um, Colin uh, has been built up. He's been up to be a legend. All right, okay. And um, Ashi says, uh, Ashi, didn't Wenger say he couldn't tackle? Arsenal Wenger did say he couldn't tackle. And do you know what, last night, it shows he still can't tackle. He got a yellow card. Got a yellow card. I'll leave it there. Uh, took Arteta three seasons to realise he can't he can tackle. <laughs> Goodness. Oh dear me. <laughs> All right, and last one. Uh, you know, <laughs> even though nobody believed he was Liverpool standards, well, horses for courses, isn't it? Uh, the X Man uh, is gonna get a, <laughs> he's gonna get a statue, <laughs> but it won't be outside the Emirates anyway. Uh, just <laughs> one more. Uh, yeah, a statue <laughs> holding twelve <laughs> records. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyhow, anyhow, um, so on Sunday, people, we, we're back in um, the Premier, Premier League action against um, the Saints. Now, I pen this topic this time last year, Ralph. This time last year, did we not offer and give Arteta a new contract when we lost three games on a bounce? The third game was against um, Southampton. What's going to happen yeah. on, on Sunday, Ralph? Yeah, that, that makes sense because we just, for whatever reason, we don't perform well at St. Mary's. We, yeah. Uh, Southampton, wherever they're, whatever they're doing themselves in their own form and league position, we always seem to struggle down there. So, yeah, there you go. We got we got that one win away, but, but we lost in the FA Cup. We lost last year. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> It, what it is the struggle maybe with with um with the opposing manager with with Hasenhutl, that that there's something we can't we can't seem to break down but that said as as I was saying before we picked up a lot of points especially on the road this season where we weren't able to last year because we've added that quality we've added our Zinchenko our Gabriel Jesus but also that kind of winning mentality so so there's the positives for us um it's mm. it's going to be a tough game because we see we see the last three three games have been those one nil wins. We're we're really grinding out results. Yeah. I do think against PSV, although we only won one nil, we we were in control. They they didn't offer much in terms of actually managing to to break us down and create chances. It was an, the exact opposite, I suppose, the Leeds game where we were <laughs> we were lucky to get away with that with that win. Um, I don't know how it goes. It's it's, uh, it's going to be a tough one, I think, because because of things like the the players that we used on Thursday are going to have to go again. And for as much as Arteta is saying they have to be able to do it every three days, it's easier said than done. So it's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a yeah. tough one. Yeah. Uh, and 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 for you, um, Isaac, the game on Sunday, where do you see it being played out? Uh, maybe a prediction as well, if you want to. <clears throat> I I am more confident of uh, uh, going to uh, to the Saints, and like when we're going to uh, uh, Leeds, I said Leeds was going to be a tricky game, and it was a yeah. tricky game. Yeah. Uh, this time last season we had only fourteen points. We had uh, three, 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 three. Uh, we had uh, four wins and two. And two draws, and then we have those. We had those three losses. 
and you look at it this season we have 27 points from uh, opening 10 games and you look at it as we are heading somewhere and apparently we haven't lost a game where we have gone in as favorites this season the only game we lost was the man united and we were not favorites and away we have only conceded to man united we have kept clean sheets uh, away it is at home that we are not keeping clean sheets we have kept uh, uh four clean sheets away and it's something positive and i reckon we can also keep a, cl a clean sheet tomorrow and i'm going for probably a two nil victory to the arsenal yeah but but as 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 raf just mentioned there are you not worried about the, because the squad numbers are so thin we're having to use the same players who feature in the first in the Premier League, who are also playing in the Europa League. And then, now on Sunday, those players are going to be playing again. So are you not worried about fatigue the players? I am worried, but uh, the, the the good thing is that they are winning. The winning mentality is going to keep them going. Uh, if they dropped points, it is then it might catch up with them. But the momentum that comes with winning is what keeps them going. As long as you grind out a win, you move to the next game and also grind out a, grind out a win. That is something that is keeping them going. That is some, that is the, the only positive that I'm taking from this squad because we have we have a squad uh, like like 15, 15 uh, players who are, uh, uh, I can say are good players because we, 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 we cannot rotate like the, the likes of Man City or Chelsea because they have a, a, a huge they have a huge bench. But the winning mentality, uh, 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 winning at PSV could prove to be, uh, uh, could prove to be very vital uh, as beating PSV despite the fact that we won 1 nil. You look at the last three games. We've been winning 1 nil, 1 nil, 1 nil. Score one goal and don't give a goal away. Even if you you win one nil, you have won, but don't don't concede. We've been winning one nil, one nil, one nil, and I reckon because of the the the, the, the momentum that has come with the winning, that is something that is going to give us a push on Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, unlike you, uh, Ralph, fatigue. I know Arteta is talking about playing seventy plus games, but. You know, as a whole, the squad numbers are quite thin. Fatigue might play a factor in this season. I think I think fatigue is a factor, and I think the one way we've countered it so far is we score early, or, or yeah. we've often scored early this season. We come out that we really come out the blocks playing very well, and that's something that kind of quick start. And if you can score the first goal, which I think we've done in the last eight games in the Premier League or something. So that that really helps us and puts us on the on the front foot. And I think then it's much easier, of course, to defend a one 0 lead than than be chasing from from a goal down. So that that helps you in terms of your what's the word kind of kind of in looking after yourself, right? When you, when you are thinking about fatigue and, and tiredness. So the the real key against Southampton is to try and get out of the blocks early. And and thinking about that is it's starting your best team. I think too, right? You start your best yeah. team, you try and get that goal early, and then you can worry about resting players and, and giving people a break, uh, especially those that are on four yellow cards. Because I think I think there's another, apart from Jesus, it's probably Shaka, but <laughs> there's a couple that we need to, to <laughs> take care of, thinking of, of suspensions and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't actually... Um, this has just come up to my mind now, because I know Ralph was not on the East Talk last week. Actually, Ralph hasn't been on, on the channel for, for actually a couple of months. But Ralph, I want to ask you a question about um, Nicolas Pepe. What's your thoughts about Nicolas Pepe? Do you think, you know, his probably career is probably done at Arsenal or do you think there is a way back uh, for him at Arsenal? It's funny you mention him because I think he scored at St Mary's maybe in the last, the last time we won. Um, so I was thinking about him just now. I was looking at some of the stats. You look at the the way we're playing and the and the the unit we've brought together. I think Isaac mentioned it. Like those fifteen players that that we can really rely on and, and that squad. 
there's not really room for him. I don't think we, we need him. We talked about before, I think you asked me a couple of months ago, actually, when we are talking about him, and my view was a bit different. I thought there was maybe still something we can do with him, but, but do we need him? Uh, probably not, because, I mean, we've got, we got Saka and Martinelli playing so well at the moment, and then you just think, do, does he change the style? And I think he does. I think he changes our style a bit because of the way he... He likes to play. He likes a bit more time on the ball himself. He likes to try and cut in. And it's very different to Saka, who Saka will dribble the ball a lot. So will Martinelli. But there's always purpose. There's always kind of a very directness about it that sometimes Pepe was missing as he twisted and turned his way around the pitch. So I I think it's it's a good time for him to, to move on. It's good for everybody, I yeah, think, yeah. To, yeah. because yeah. we've got the quality. We've got the quality ourselves. Yeah, and actually, Isa, I think you were saying that maybe the body language, um, Arteta is not not looking for that kind of profile player who appears to be just taking it easy on the pitch. He wants players actively, you know, actively taking a part in in whatever, um, how can I say, formation or the attack. There is no way back for Nico Pepper, is there? Is there, Isaac? There's no way back for him. Uh, it will be very difficult to see a, a way back for him at the moment. Because as, as Rafa has just rightly put it, uh, he changes the dynamics of the game or the way how you want to set up. Because if you have to include him in the, in the game, you, 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 you attacking will not be as quick as it is with Saka and Martinelli. Because mm. he... He, he dwells on the ball more. He doesn't release the ball more. So you can imagine a striker has, has made a run into the opposition box and then he's holding a play instead of uh, releasing the ball so that you can build up an attack. So it, it will be very difficult to see a way back for Pepe because you look at it, we have also Maquinhos. We brought Maquinhos in. So we, it's like we're having a plan B is we having a backup for Saka and and and, and before before actually we brought in Marquinhos we were talking of uh, this boy who went to Barcelona from Leeds Rafinha <laughs> so if we had brought in Rafinha then where will Pepe come to play so I don't think Ateta has him in his plans so it's probably the best time that he moved on now yeah yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Let's go back into the live chat just for the last time before we wrap up this East Talk, which is 52 minutes has just flown by. Uh, Colin says, um, approaching the topic again, question, how do we avoid the wolves falling off? I have a few ideas. Well, if you can share them, please, Colin, with us. We would like to know. Uh, the only game uh, that we, we might uh, lose is Chelsea. Uh, up until uh, the World Cup is going to come down to the Cronkies' ambition uh, in the January transfer window. Actually, that's the other thing, Ralph, I wanted to ask you. It's, it, I mean, it's historically very difficult to buy players in the January transfer window. Last January, we didn't we didn't buy any players. Actually, we were going after one striker, uh, Vladovic, and because we didn't get him, we went to uh, Juventus, it went dead. Uh, Arsenal, should they be determined to buy some players in the January transfer window, Ralph, this time round? No, and only if they can get the players they want and the right players. Because what we've learned now is that Edu and Arteta are very aligned on the kind of players they want and who the profile. And also, I think for them, what, what we've started to understand is how important is the mentality in terms of the profile of the player, not just, not, yeah. we're not just talking talent and skill level, because they have a really young group and this young group can easily be thrown off by the wrong kind of leadership or people in there. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm not in a rush for us to pick somebody up if it's not going to be the right fit. And I think that's where Edu and Arteta have improved a lot have talking about some of the players that we just talked about Pepe for example that that just weren't the right fit for the team there's mm -hmm. no rush yeah okay okay John Nagisa says um oh every team should be fearing us we fear no one <laughs> okay uh our defense is still dodgy we have been very lucky in the last uh, two Premier League games top teams will not miss um, many chances well we played against Liverpool as a top team still and we beat them. 
so anyway, you know, there's, there's always that debate. If we play against a top team, you know, they won't miss those chances. But we've been playing against the top teams, haven't we, Ralph? So, yeah, our, our defense, I mean, they're... The, the question mark I would have sometimes is is that because Saliba is very young and he's a very good recovery defender, but the problem about recovery defenders is you don't want them to actually make the mistake that so they have to recover in the first place. So there there is that issue that between Gabriel and, and Saliba, are we sometimes are they still prone to some of those mistakes that, that young players have? But but I agree with you. I mean, over the course of the season. We, yeah, sure, we've we've conceded chances, but I think the XG like against Arsenal is is much lower than it was last year. So I think we've we've certainly improved in in that department. I'm I'm yeah. confident for for us that we keep building because those two players, that partnership particularly, they're just going to get better and better as the more they play together. Yeah, well said. And do you know what? We have come to an end on this latest segment of the Easy Talk. And for some reason, um, Isaac has just left the stream. He, t- <laughs> he turned left in Albuquerque. <laughs> he shouldn't have done it. <laughs> turn right! Turn right! <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, anyway, Ralph, I want to say a big thank you again for coming back. You are always welcome on the channel, my friend. Always welcome. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, you. Alex. Always a pleasure. And it's happy. Keep keep bringing yes. me in when we're top of the league. <laughs> so there you go. The next time you will see me live on Channel 4 TV will be on Sunday. Not Sunday. Monday, begging your pardon. Um, yeah, got some business about um, just kind of giving everyone, all the subscribers and members, uh, some heads up about what's going to be happening on the channel uh, in the next couple of months. Um, I don't do any content over the weekend anymore. I leave up to my brother. And don't forget to tune in for the big Sunday show with Paul in the North Bank. And I think maybe Richard will be there as well. But from both Ralph and myself, um, this has been Canon Fodder, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world. <laughs>